Hey guys, welcome back. Luca here. Today I want to talk about a very popular topic. Is working remote really bad for you if you're a software engineer? As we can tell from the recent news, the economy isn't really doing well. And you, you see a lot of news about like uh, potential layoffs, job cuts. One thing definitely you want to take note is, for example, the CEO of Tesla, Elon, recently made an announcement like if he's ever going to cut out people, the remote worker is going to be the first one to go. So he made, a, he made it clear, like, oh, if you're remote, you're pretty much guaranteed to be cut out. So like in some companies may not be as extreme as this, but as you can see, like this could potentially actually be a game changer and not looking too good for people who might prefer remote work. I think one of the most important thing to consider is like, what is your company's position on this topic? Do you hear a lot of news, a lot of teams talking about like, oh, we might want to move away from remote work or are they still flexible about it? Because this is a very important thing. Like you have to be able to tell like which direction your company is leaning towards, which direction most of your coworkers prefer. If, you're most, if most of your coworkers love to go into the office, that might be, say something about like, oh, am I going to be the first person to get fired? It doesn't necessarily imply that, but definitely higher risk. So I would want to share a few advice for people who want to be remote. So recently I was at a talk and one of the speaker, something they mentioned is the fact that if they're going to have to decide to let someone go, they will first review and see who they don't know. So one advantage of people who are in the office is the FaceTime. Let's say you are at a meeting. After the meeting ends, if you're in office, there's like side chat that you can have with your teammates. This builds connection as well as show you exposure. But whereas you are remote, you literally just turn off your camera, you exit the chat, and that's the end of the conversation. And it's very easy to get lost when you're working remote. So I would say definitely you want to increase your visibility. What are some good advice? Maybe you can encourage your team to make meetings more remote friendly. For example, scheduling meetings five minutes earlier so people can join the meeting five minutes prior and have conversations that way. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're remote, try to schedule one-on-ones with as many cross-functional partners as possible, not just your teammates, your managers, but also teams that's like the UX, the PMs, this way, you increase your exposure as well as building connections with people. I would say a lot of these things are especially better at bigger companies since they are more aware of these things. But definitely something to keep in mind is like maybe you can volunteer to be the captain to host like weekly coffee side chat or like game night that help your team bond. Of course, like recently, like Google CEO Sundar or Alphabet CEO Sundar also made an announcement about like he wants to crack down unnecessary meetings, stuff like that. So once again, are we saying like, oh, are we shifting more towards in office now since we are cutting down unnecessary meetings? But you can make a case about some of these things being relevant. So try not to overbook other people's calendar. You can keep it short and sweet. For example, a bi-weekly 15 minute coffee chat just to chat with your teammates, your cross-functional team members just so they know who you are. Say another thing that uh, you definitely want to know is, for example, one of my favorite book, The 4-Hour Workweek, it says like people will more likely to accept if you do a really good job on something rather than, you know, they will let you slide if you miss a meeting or two. But if you deliver something really, really good, then that's a game changer. I would say this can also apply to software engineering as well. If you're someone who likes remote work, one benefit being like flexibility, but you definitely also want to make sure that when you do do your work, it's the best and most productive time of your life. You want to work on projects that will make an impact as well as being able to measure the impact that you make. One recommendation I have is discuss it very well, thorough with your manager. Tell them what is your goal. Do you want to go for a promotion? Are you trying to just learn as much as possible? Are you trying to become a tech lead? Are you trying to switch over to a manager eventually? Trying to build some sort of metrics that you and your manager can discuss together and work towards that goal, set milestones. 
And another thing that's really good is talk to your tech lead, talk to someone who you work really closely with. They will be able to see insight that you might not be able to see. They see from an outside box perspective, like, oh, what's something that you are doing really, really, really well? And what's some areas of improvement? Don't shy away from areas of improvement because that's actually how you grow and show that you are a team player. And especially in a remote world, this is something that's very critical. Like you want people to know like, oh, you take their advice. You may not be around them for them to physically see you, but you are someone who are eager to learn and do a good job. So definitely want to contribute and try your hardest to ramp up if you're switching a new team as fast as possible and then try to work on challenging problem, but not too challenging enough that you will hit your head on the wall. Trying to have a gradual increase in difficulties. And this is when managers tech lead come in hand that can help guide you and pick the right project. Another thing I want to make is a lot of times when you are at a bigger company, one case you can make is sure I might be fully remote, but there are also people who work from a satellite office. For example, I might be working in Seattle office, but my teammate is in San Francisco or New York City. There could be a time zone difference or not a time zone difference. For those people who aren't working closely with your team, technically speaking, they're also remote, but then they're not really considered remote because they have to go into the office. So I feel like those are also on the same boat as remote, although you are still going to office. Because at the end of the day, you still don't get that visual human interactions. So just because you're in office, it doesn't necessarily mean like you are actually in office unless you are really close to your teammates. So that's not definitely something you want to take notes on. Ideally speaking, like a lot of people recommend young people to go into the office just to build this human interaction. But I definitely think you can still make it work in a remote setting. The only reason why most people don't know or don't say it is because they haven't done that yet. So I think it's our chance to actually show and demonstrate how we can create this sense of meaningful connection with people in a remote world. And I think that's something really exciting and uh, it's definitely going to be very important integral part of our life. So yeah, at the end of the day, I'm not looking to go back into the office anytime soon. I will still stay as remote, but definitely want to focus on the bullet points that I mentioned. Try to, I will try to schedule more meetings, more meaningful connections with some of my teammates just to have more connections. And yeah, I feel like if you enjoy the people around you, the work becomes more fun as well. So yeah, I think although remote workers are at a higher risk of being laid off, not because remote is bad, but because a lot of people don't know how to work efficiently. So yeah, I hope this video was very helpful and uh, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. I will see you guys next time.